is that I thought that I would share with you my birth and labour story. I always had a birth plan. When I was pregnant, I knew that I was going to have a water birth, I did natal hypnotherapy, which is all of the, you know, breathing in the contractions like a wave and blowing them away and it's all going to be pain-free and wonderful and calm. And I actually believed that. I genuinely believed that it wasn't going to hurt because I was going to control the pain all up here. None of that pain relief stuff. Slightly different, happened so <laughs> didn't go to plan. I remember I was bouncing on the ball, I'd had a curry, I'd been for a walk that day because I was three days overdue and I'd been having Braxton Hicks so I wasn't quite sure when the contractions start if they really were contractions. But then they got more intense and more intense. Yeah, kind of got to a point after maybe four or five that I was like, yeah, these aren't Braxton Hicks anymore. It wasn't a big rush to go to hospital. I think I had a bath and chilled out at home. Went down to the hospital and no sooner did we go in, did the midwife check me out and say, no, you're not even one centimetre yet, go home. Come back when it's worse. And I remember just thinking, it gets worse. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> so we went home. All I could think was, I'm gonna have this baby on the motorway. And I remember when I left the house, I thought the next time I come through the store, I'm gonna have a baby with me. And I think that, that for me was really emotional because I just thought, and I walked back through and I was just like, I still don't have a baby, but it was just very disheartening. Got into bed and about five minutes later, my waters broke and we called the hospital and they were like, yeah, come on down. Jasper had pooed inside me. They call it Mech. Um, I want to say Meckleberg, but that is Lucy from Towie's name. So when my waters broke, they were actually quite a brownie colour. And because of this, he was more susceptible to infection and I couldn't have a water birth. So as soon as she told me that, I just felt like, I felt like I lost control because that was my plan. That's what I was going to do. I was going to be in the water. And my plan was to do like a Kourtney Kardashian and literally pull him out and hold him. I wanted to be the first person to touch my baby. That was in my notes. I didn't want anyone else to touch my baby before me. Pete was asleep next to me on the chair. I just thought, how dare you? I can't sleep. You, you're not allowed to. Every contraction, I would squeeze his fingers, probably more than I needed to, just wake him up. Oh. It was such a beautiful thing, but it just makes me feel so obviously overwhelmingly emotional in a good way. When we went back in, it was one o'clock. And by that point, I just, I couldn't, I wasn't controlling the pain with my natal hypnotherapy. It was helping me to breathe through the contractions, but the pain wasn't, it wasn't what I expected it to be, which was non-existent. <laughs> and at that point I just said to them, I want an epidural. I, I didn't even want to push him out. I just wanted them to to do everything for me. I was tired and I was in pain and I was irritable and I was disappointed. And I just, if they'd said to me, you're gonna have a C-section right now, I'd said, that's fine. Complete opposite to my birth plan, but that's what I wanted. And I asked them for it and they said, no. So they gave me pethidine. It's to relax you. It's a small injection in your thigh. They said it would take about 15 minutes to work. As soon as she walk out the room, I said to Pete, I need to push. And he was like, no, you don't, you're fine. And I was just like, listen to me, <laughs> don't you tell me I'm fine. I was like, I need to push. So anyway, he went out and he was like, oh, she's saying she needs to push, just, you know, just go, just go with it. Anyway, they came in and they were like, you're only, you know, 0.5 centimeters, you don't need to push yet. And I was like, I need to push. Like, it felt like I was gonna poo myself. I was like, I need to push. <laughs> she checked me out and she's like, oh, you're nine centimeters. Like, you don't say. Like, <laughs> So in 15 minutes, I'd shot from, half a centimetre to nine centimetres. And oh my God, did I know it. It was so intense. So anyway, that's when the pushing started. I remember watching One Born Every Minute and thinking, oh my God, I'm never gonna be a screamer like that. I wasn't a screamer, but I was just like, <laughs> It's so cringy when you think about it now. And I kept saying to Pete, I've pooed, haven't I? I've pooed. And he was just like, you haven't pooed. And I was like, they tell you to tell me that. The midwife decided to tell me that the next stage was called the ring sting. It would be painful, but it would be over soon. I don't need to explain what it is. <laughs> so anyway, at that point, I was just like, I can't do it, I can't do it. And in my head, very, very selfishly, I remember thinking, if I just tell them I can't do it, they'll have to just give me a C-section. They'll have to do it all for me. I wasn't thinking of Jasper, which now makes me feel really, really guilty. But at that point, I just thought, I can't do it. And what I didn't know was at that point, Jasper got stuck and his heart rate either dropped or shot up. Um, and Pete said he remember looking at 
the midwife and her face was just a panic and she pushed the red button and about three people came in and she said to me, you know, if you don't push now, we're going to have to cut you. She said, I didn't know anything was going on with Jasper and they said they were going to cut me and I remember just thinking, screw that, <laughs> I don't want to be cut, oh my god. Um, so I just pushed, one big push and out he shot. And it was just this overwhelming release of like, he's here, my baby is here. And I just remember Pete crying. I didn't cry, I think because I was so like, what the hell has just happened to me? And I remember them putting him on me and he was just so clean. He wasn't like purple and wrinkly and covered in gunk. He was just perfect. And then um, he was just looking up to me with his huge eyes. And it was just amazing. That pain went instantly. Any kind of worries and fears and it, it was just gone as soon as he came out and it, it was amazing. And I remember afterwards thinking, oh, never again, never again. But by day two, I was like, I would do it all again right now. So I know my story has, <laughs> you know, probably not being the nicest and probably makes you think, oh God, I don't want to do it now. But it's just so worth it and so amazing and beautiful and I'm so proud of myself. If you have a plan, that's great, it's wonderful to have a plan, to feel like you've got some control. But if that plan goes out the window, that's great too. You know, the whole, your birth story is your birth story because it's about you and your baby and it's wonderful and it's beautiful, whether it hurt like hell or it was an enjoyable pain. If you want to check out some more birth stories then head over to Channel Mum because I know lots of ladies are giving their birth stories. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and all that jazz.